Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Welcome to the Tuesday point and shoot update for November the 13th, 2018. Not a lot has changed this week, but a couple things have happened. First of all, let's go around here to the clownfish. You'll remember last week we had clownfish eggs, but they're all gone now. And Sunny and Cher have moved on to different places. One of which is clearing this glass and they've made quite a mess along here. Uh, the toadstool is uh, quite upset and it keeps getting moved around. So it's not very happy today. It's going to be going into the new tank once things are ready over there. There's the toadstool baby. And everything over here is looking good. The other thing that happened this week is that the Yuma decided to go for a walk. It was originally over here. There's the baby it left, that green dot, and it was in that kind of white area on the rock. I noticed it, thank goodness, almost immediately. So right away I put it into this breeder box. And it still has not attached to its rock. It's been in here for, oh, maybe four days now. I thought it was attached. It was closing up at night. It looked pretty solid. And this morning when I moved the box down a little bit to let some flow into the top here, because it had originally been above the water level, it just let go. I'm batting 0%, <laughs> whatever that means, when it comes to getting mushrooms reattached to something, because it's just not working. So other than those two things, the clownfish eggs and the Yuma, things are looking good. Everybody seems happy. This is what I mean by Buster. He's hugely expanded today. The Cherry Blastomusa is just looking amazing. After all of the disastrous stuff that happens in here, it really seems to have bounced back. The other coral that's gorgeous is this hammer. It's quite lush and full. The war coral has regained its red color, which I love. And this is the one that was hidden behind the rocks that are in front of my overflow. And I had hoped that it would encrust and grow upwards on the overflow, but it just kept getting knocked down, flipped over. But it has really recovered nicely. The bird's nest is still recovering at the bottom there. Not looking so white anymore, so who knows. I did manage to get some power heads cleaned, but not these. <laughs> I got the ones on the other side cleaned up. Have to do the j today. It was one of those weeks just so much stuff happened and I just could not get to it. The only test I had time to do was for alkalinity and it was at 8.288 last night, so essentially 8.3. It's where it is now is right in the range where I would like it to stay. So we'll see what happens the next time I test. I've spread the tests out now, they're not daily, because there's just too much of a chance I'm going to react incorrectly if I see a huge change in a reading that could just be a glitch. So I take the tests only every couple of days now. In the sump, this week I had to clean the algae scrubber, and here's why. Yeah, it was the most disgusting thing I've seen in a while. So I got in touch with Brian at Santa Monica Filtration and he got right back to me with advice. So it involved cleaning the whole thing and here's what it looked like when it was all done. And so now it's back in operation in the sump along with Chad. Chad also got cleaned up because his skimmer cup was really nasty and disgusting. It looked like this. Yeah, so I know this is supposed to be point and shoot, no editing, but I couldn't resist adding in those things. I also cleaned out the media reactor. You can't see it, but it's right there. And I swapped out the rollafos. So it'll be interesting to see what the phosphates are. All right, time for the tour of chalices. We start with this guy. I don't know what it is, but it is beautiful. It's starting to encrust on the rock. 
and the colors under blue light are gorgeous. Green, yellow, and orange on sort of a bluey purple skin. Really nice. Then we have this one. And this one has grown from a little tiny frag about the size of a postage stamp to something that's a pretty decent size. Then we have this guy, variously reported as mummy eye or bubble gum. I'm tending more to think bubble gum because it's more blue than green. But who knows, I guess I'll see as time goes by and it spreads out on that rock. And here's the gold chalice. It's spreading out on its rock and looking really beautiful. Then we have this guy, it keeps getting knocked off and I've decided where I'm going to put it. So first step is to mount it on a piece of rock and then mount that rock on my live rock. And again, I just haven't had time to do it. Then we have that guy. It's doing really, really nicely in that spot. And I originally created this rock structure in the center with the idea that I would put Montipora and chalices on it. And that one is really spreading out nicely in color. The color is just beautiful. We have a red chalice, which was called Purple Storm when I bought it. And it has taken a long time to start to grow around the edges. I've moved it a few times. It's mounted almost vertically, but that seems to be working in terms of light. Down here, the devil's eye chalice. Oh, he's got a flake. He's eating a flake. Either that or he's pooping. When I got it, it had two eyes, and now it is has five, as you can see. And it was basically just that center area. It was smaller than the head of a frag plug. And now it's really spreading out nicely on that rock. So the next chalice requires me to take the lid off. Okay, so I have my cell phone in a floating box that I had made. And one of these days I'm going to do a complete top-down tour, but that's not today. <laughs> so the last chalice I want to show you is that one right there. That is a mycetium. When I bought that, <clears throat> I didn't do any research, and I should have, because I was told it has relatively short sweeper tentacles. Oh no, it doesn't. It has really long sweepers, so long that they've stung the heck out of my Starburst Montipora, which, oh my goodness, I haven't looked at this in a while. Wow. Okay, this is a morph of this one, which you can see has yellow polyps. This one has green polyps. And wow, look at them all. Holy smokes, I have not seen this before. This is amazing because my concern was if you look at all the dead areas that have been stung by this guy, I was thinking that it was on its way out. But I, wow, I'm blown away by that. It shows you they survive, don't they? There's the gold torch while we're up here. Take a look at it. Maze brain. Oh, here's a really good angle for the fox coral. Got a lot of blue in it, which I love. I need to move it a little more forward when I get a chance. It's really hard to go through a busy week, as I'm sure reefers know, because uh, there's just so many things I have to do in here and I just haven't had a chance. So yeah, mycetium. So if you see a mycetium for sale, yes, they are indeed beautiful, but they're deadly. So this guy, I'm pretty sure I can pop him right off the rock and he will be going into the new tank when things are ready over there. Buster. George is looking pretty good today. Cyphastria, Red Planet. Ooh, you can really see the polyps on that guy. I'm actually kind of enjoying this. This is a view I don't get too often. Really basing out that one. Colors are nice on that. 
I think this is maybe a Spongoides or Spongoides, something like that. It doesn't look like a standard acro with sticks. And there's a view of what's left of this guy. Now this one looks really pretty. Let me get a better angle. Okay, this is what this is supposed to look like with the blue and the green with the red. So I could light off fireworks right now. I, I'm so thrilled that it survived, first of all, and secondly, that it's coloring up the way it's supposed to. So this is awesome. This is supposed to be a sunset Millie, maybe someday. <laughs> And that one is just base, no branches. They all disappeared. And there we have another one. So there you go. Don't buy mycetium unless you have Hollywood Stunner type space available around it. And there's what I used to get that footage. I had this made at a local acrylic shop for about 35 bucks and it works really well. Although I should have turned off the flow because <laughs> it's moving around a lot. So that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this Tuesday point and shoot update. And next week I can show you more of this tank because the cycle is finished. Until next week, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stanley. Awesome.